What we have here is the Ecto-1 vehicle made by Kenners as part of the real Ghostbusters toy line. It is based off the real Ghostbusters animated series, Ecto-1, which itself was based on the 1984 film version. Ecto-1 is a 1959 Cadillac, or otherwise known as an ambulance or a hearse vehicle, used in the 1984 film Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, and now returning for Ghostbusters Afterlife. In the original movie, Ray pays $4,800 for it and claimed it needed many repairs, such as Need some suspension work and shocks and uh, brakes, brake pads, lining, steering box, transmission, rear end. How much? Only $4,800. Maybe new. Ecto-1 was used to carry the Ghostbusters and their ghost capturing equipment through New York City. Its features include a special pull-out rack utilising the old ambulance's gurney in the rear containing the staff's proton packs. There are also various gadgets mounted on the top of the vehicle, which functions are never really revealed in the movies. In the earlier versions of the Ghostbusters scripts, written by Dan Aykroyd, it included mentions of Ecto-1 having the power of interdimensional travel. The shooting script for the movie describes the Ecto-1 as being black with purple and white strobe lights and gave the vehicle a purple aura, but the colour of the vehicle was changed to white when it was decided that a black car would be too difficult to see during the night scenes. For the first two Ghostbusters films, Sony used three different 1959 Cadillac cars, one that portrayed the unmodified car that Ray had bought, one that portrayed Ecto-1 in the 1984 film, one that portrayed Ecto-1 as a completed car, and a third that portrayed Ecto-1A in the 1989 film sequel. The black Cadillac that was seen at the beginning of the first movie was actually leased and only used for that scene, and was never converted for filming, though it was later purchased by the studio and completely converted to a full Ecto-1 for promotional touring. According to Hemmings.com in an interview with the Ghostbusters fans website, the main car that was the Ecto-1A has in fact been repurposed as one of the three Ecto-1 cars for the new Ghostbusters Afterlife movie. AJ Quick, webmaster of the Ghostbusters fans website, was one of the instigators of the fan petition intended to save Ecto-1A from the crusher several years ago. Ecto-1, as lore goes, actually died on the Brooklyn Bridge during the filming of Ghostbusters 2. Years later, Sony treated it to a full restoration and has displayed in various venues, all the while leaving the Ecto-1A to languish on the Sony backlot after a petition from the Ghostbusters fans website to buy and restore the vehicle fell through in 2007. While Sony didn't appear to respond directly to the petition, Sony did decide to put Ecto-1A into proper storage. According to AJ Quick, Sony converted the former Ecto-1A into a reasonable copy of the Ecto-1 car for Ghostbusters Afterlife and outfitted two more Cadillac cars for shooting. Now, knowing all this, this raises a question regarding the Ecto-1 in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Is the vehicle shown here, within the Ghostbusters film continuity, not the real world, Ecto-1A downgraded back to Ecto-1? Or was Ecto-1A in Ghostbusters 2 actually a different car to Ecto-1 in Ghostbusters 1? Or was Ecto-1 in Ghostbusters 2 so trashed that they got another Cadillac and named it Ecto-1A? If so, what happened to Ecto-1A? Or is Ghostbusters 2 going to be completely ignored? Will Afterlife be a direct sequel to Ghostbusters 1? Comment below with your thoughts and theories. Ghostbusters! Okay, where are those ghosts? Yo! They're everywhere! All real men turn into Ecto-1! Bateman! We're ghosts! Zazzle! The real Ghostbusters, each sold separately from Kenner. We ain't afraid of no ghosts! Yeah! <laughs> And so we move on to Ecto-1, the model toy from Kenner's Toys. This uh, is from 1984, and I originally got this round about, I think it was Christmas of 1985 or 86. I, quite, I can't quite remember now, it's been a long time. Um, as you can see, the uh, white um, body has faded quite a bit. Yeah, it's more of a beigey colour now, 
and the stickers on the car for the uh, Ghostbusters symbol and the back window they are long gone they peeled off a long time ago um, the car is quite dusty so what I will be looking to do today is just give it um, a wipe over to get, some, get rid of some of that dust and apply some stickers which um, I've aged slightly to give it a aged look what I'm looking for is a homage to Ghostbusters Afterlife where we've seen in the trailers where Ecto-1 is looking uh, quite old and decrepit so moving on now we I'll just give this a wipe over there's quite a lot of thick dust and a, th and a few little marks uh, those should come off with a bit of uh, elbow grease the rear fin I believe that's what they call this the uh, red part here back in the uh, 50s for the old Cadillacs and obviously you can see on the door where the stickers used to be or the Ghostbuster symbol sticker used to be I should really clean it off properly but to be honest with you I can't be bothered I've spent too long on this video already Again here you can see where the um, blue window sticker was in, in remnants of that. To be fair the car is in pretty good condition uh, despite the discolouring. There's hardly any marks on it at all. Uh, I was quite good as a child looking after my toys. And we'll just wipe off the roof section here. There are a couple of bits missing. There is a seat missing from the top where the Ghostbusters will sit on top and zap the ghosts. That was only in the real Ghostbusters cartoon series. And here we have is the stickers that I've found online. What I've done is put them into um, paint.net um, free software and given and I've given it an aged look. And what I've done is print them out on uh, A4 sticker paper you can buy that from a stationery shop or you can buy it online and this it's very common so what I'll do here I'm gonna I've printed two versions so I'm gonna use these ones here I, f I prefer the look of these so I'll cut these out and I'll start sticking them onto the car and here we are in an interesting view of me cutting out the stickers That was exciting. And now the more fiddly bit, we'll have to go into more detail and try and cut a circle and not cut off the ghost's hands. It's actually a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. And here we are. So they look good so far. Now we're just going to match them up, make sure they fit. So first off, we've got the rear license plate or registration plate whatever you want to call it and uh, it's good to have um, a decent length on your nails to get the uh, sticky back uh, paper off the sticker and there we go exciting stuff this yep there we go XO1 And on we go. Should fit nicely. Just got to get the alignment uh, right. And there we go. Just like that. One down, a few more to go. So we'll just uh, do the rear door, the, the symbol for the rear door. Um, it needs. A little bit more trimming it's not a perfect match these stickers that I found online they're, they're, they're okay they weren't like they're obviously um, copies that someone had scanned in uh, from the originals so they're not 100% perfect 
so it's okay it was it was served its purpose for this project so that lines up more or less okay now here we go again let's get this, this sticky bit off and we'll line it up and get it on there and there we are it's not perfect but I'm happy with that I'm for what I'm going for it's perfect and you can see that aged look that's what I wanted and now for the rear window sticker it's quite a, it's quite big still so it needs some more trimming Oh, this is fun, isn't it? Yeah, that's better. Now, here we go again. Let's get it applied. As I say, get good now. Get right into the little gap. And get the alignment. There we go. Not perfect, but it's okay. It serves its purpose. Now we do the driver's door, and we can see that needs some more trimming with the scissors. Yeah, that's better. Maybe a little bit more, and then we can get that onto the door. And here we go. Let's get that stuck onto the driver's door. And there you go. What I've noticed is where I've actually I've placed it onto the door, I've actually given it a rub with a cloth. It's actually taken some of the ink off, which um, is okay, but I would have preferred some more ink on there still from when I originally printed it out. I can always go back to it. Not too fast at the moment because I want to move on to my next project. I've pretty much had enough of this. Um, let's do this passenger door again. It needs trimming. And here we go. Let's get it ready. And onto the door we go that's it and you can see the same again some of the ink has come off where I've actually uh, rubbed it with a cloth to get it on there properly so lastly we need to do the front license plate or registration plate whatever you want to call it I think it depends on which country you're from I know in America they call it the license plate in England it's the registration plate That needs a little bit more trimming. And there we go. All done. So let's just take a look at it. Um, yeah, it's okay. I'm happy with that for the time being. As I say, I can go back to this at a later point. In I'll probably redo those um, those stickers for the doors again. Now, I like the aged look, but I would have preferred a lot more ink uh, to stay on there. Um, but yeah, I'll give this to my son and let him play for it for a while. And uh, there we go. That pretty much wraps it up for this video. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or thoughts, then please leave a comment below. And um, Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. Take care now.